The standard interface defines the fundamental menu system of buttons and switches that are common to most of the other interfaces, so it's a good idea to review the interface in some detail. So to get to the standard interface, simply come over here and click on the Run Standard Interface button. Starting with the control group, you can select your COM port and baud rate and then simply click on the rocker switch to start plotting. We notice that our COM port is set to COM20. And if we're not sure of that, we can always reload COM ports. And this will give you the COM port that your micro is typically connected to. If it's not, if you have multiple COM ports connected, then Generally, it's the highest number COM port that is connected to your micro because it was the one that was connected last. You can then click on the reload ports at any time to check your COM port. And then when you're done, simply click the rocker switch and you'll begin plotting. You can also reset the plot at any time. And this will reset the plot to time zero. And we should say that we are plotting 10 analog sine wave channels and 8 channels of digital data at the moment. We also have a data point size of 1500. And this is a, a minimum size that we typically use. So we're going to increase that for this demonstration to 5000. This will allow more data to be archived for shifting and playback. While you can set the data point size to nearly any value, staying between 1,500 and 5,000 is a good range. Anything more will cause the program performance to begin to suffer, as Makerplot has to process all the data in the data buffer every time the screen is refreshed. So the less data points, the faster Makerplot can process them. Next to the control group are the y-axis controls. Here you can change the y-axis scale by clicking on the double or half buttons. And notice that we went from 250 to 500 to 1000 by doubling it. Now we can go the opposite way by halving it. We're back to 250 again. And you can even change the minimum and maximum default values from 0 to 250 to something else that suits you. Uh, for example, let's make the maximum 400. So just key in 400 in the text box. Click the Enter key. And now our y-axis goes from 0 to 400. There's also a text box to enter a label for the y-axis. And since we're plotting digital and analog data, let's enter digital and analog for a label. Digital and analog. Click the Enter key. And the y-axis is labeled digital and analog. There's even a button to auto-scale the data, so what does that mean? Well, let's click on it to find out. As you can see, the y-axis adjusts to the minimum and maximum amplitude of the analog sine waves. Now, this is a neat feature, especially if you're plotting data and want to have the y-axis adjust to it quickly. You can bring back the original Y scale by going back to the control group and clicking on the Reset Axis button, like now. Now the Y axis goes back to the values in the min and max text boxes, which are right now 0 for minimum and 400 for maximum. To the right of the Y axis, is the X or time axis controls. Here you can quickly and easily switch among seconds, minutes, and hours. So we're at seconds right now, 0 to 60. Let's go to minutes. And our time axis switches to minutes, 0 to 1 minute. And let's go to hours. 
and we switch from uh, 0 to 0.02 hours, which is one minute. We can also do real time. Click on the real time button, and now we see our real time in 24 hour time and also the date. And then, of course, we can switch back anytime we want to from real time to, let's say, seconds again. We can double the time frame and cut the time frame in half. So let's uh, stop it at 30 seconds. Hitting the uh, stop max key will actually stop the plot at uh, the maximum time, in this case 30 seconds. So what good is that? Well, there are reasons for stopping the plot, and that is we can now examine the plot in detail. There's also capabilities where we can save the plot automatically to a file, uh, print it out, or even take a snapshot of it. So that's our stop max, and when we hit stop max, we also stop plotting. As you can see up here in the toolbar, we have actually uh, stopped plotting because the plot icon is deselected. We're still connected, but again, we're, we're not plotting. So let's unclick the stop max. We're starting the plot again. Let's go to another feature of the x-axis, and that is the shift max. Click on Shift Max and notice, of course, that the Stop Max button disappears because the Shift Max button is engaged. Well, what this means is that we're going to take the amount of data above it, which is 25%, and flush that 25% of the oldest data when the plot shifts right now. There it is at 25%, and we're shifting. Now we can change the shift amount any time. Let's change it to, let's say, 50% and see what happens. There it went to 50%. We can shift the amount of data by the shift amount just by clicking on the drop-down menu. Going on to the login controls, we can log data and messages to files and also take snapshots of the screen. To start logging to the file name shown here, we just need to click to the Log to File button, and all the data we see on the plot area will now be logged to the std underscore dat text file. And data will continue to be logged as long as the Log to File button is pushed. So let's try it. Okay, we've logged some data. Let's unclick it. Now with it unclicked, our data logging has ceased, but let's take a look at the file itself. Okay, here is the log data we just did for the last few seconds. Let's examine it. What we have to begin with is the date, and that's followed by the time in hours, minutes, seconds, and fractions of seconds. And then that is followed by the time into plot in seconds, in this case 17.290 seconds. That's how far into the plot this particular sample was when it was uh, acquired. Right after the time into the plot we have our 8 bits of digital data and followed by that we have our 10 values of analog data all separated with commas. So that's how to interpret the data log file. And once again, we can leave the Log to File button on as long as you want to log as much data as we want. Let's drop that for the time being. Uh, we can come down here, of course, and change the name of the file to anything we want at any time. And one of the important things to realize, too, is that we can change the extension from TXT to a .CSV, which will make it Excel compatible directly. Nevertheless, uh, our file name must have either a .txt or .csv extension to really work. Going over to the next set of buttons, we have our snapshot, view snap, and open folder. Now what we can do here is we can use these buttons to take a snapshot of the screen like now, another one now, a third one now, and a fourth one. All right, let's view them. 
All right, there's the fourth shot that we just took. But if we come down here to the arrow icons, we can step back in time and look at the plots that we snapped. So this is a very powerful feature. We can capture these snapshots at any time manually and like we did before with our stop max and even with our shift max buttons in the x-axis we can actually take snapshots automatically when the plot hits the maximum time limit at the very very right end. Alright make sure that we switch back from our JPEGs which is what we're looking at right now to our actual plot because they look pretty much the same. So here's our actual plot going on and we again just saw the snapshot and we saw the view snap. Open folder will get us to the folder where these snaps are registered. And here they are right here and you can examine these at your leisure. You can copy them to file, rather copy them into reports, uh, manipulate them with um, Photoshop, uh, anything you want to do. So it's a very, very powerful feature of MakerPlot to not only have data logging capabilities, but also to have graphic snapshot capabilities. And finally, the last three buttons are our save settings, load settings, and plot selects. The changes that we made to this particular interface involved a uh, y-axis change and uh, certain other things. We can save those settings just by clicking Save. And it asks us to save those settings. So the next time we come back to this particular interface, we can load those settings. And those settings will then come back to our interface screen automatically. So we don't have to really key in anything anymore. And finally, our plot select gets us back to our startup interface screen. So that's really how the standard interface works. Let's run it again, reload it. The standard interface is really the basis of most of the menu systems for the other interfaces. So understanding the standard interface is uh, quite important uh, to also understanding uh, future interfaces that we're going to get into in this series.